This is the LEGO Speed Champions NASCAR Next Gen Chevrolet Camaro ZL1, released in August 2024 for $27. This is one of several Camaros LEGO has made recently, and not one of several Camaros LEGO hasn't made, but should have. Short answer to the big question, is this car good? To me, green, green, green. Yeah, it's fine. It's got all the good qualities of modern Speed Champion sets, and to me, even as the most casual of NASCAR fans, the car looks all right. But to those even more casual than me, $27 might not seem worth it for this car. But for like a week after this video releases, it's double VIP points, and if you buy three of this car and a keychain, you get a free little trophy gift with the purchase. That's appropriate. Of course, the only thing you'll be the champion of is the champion of making strange LEGO purchasing decisions. Do yourself a favor, throw the F40 in your cart as well. Of course, I am aware there are a lot of NASCAR fans out there who are far less casual than me and therefore have far stronger opinions, some of which we will attempt to address in the details section. But first, some notable prints, parts, and build techniques. This build's broken into five numbered bags, making everything easier for everyone in this generation. They just don't make them like they used to. People or Lego sets. We do get this cool American flag decal. Kind of looks like it's missing a thin blue line, but this is on a Chevy, not a Ford F-250. Plus the blue would have messed up our color scheme here. As usual with Speed Champions, the most impressive parts of this set are in the anterior, posterior, and on this set, surprisingly, the interior. Look at that DX Racer gaming chair in there with those armrests. On that front end, you got some crazy upside down stuff going on here. Two right angles making a 180 in the space of about one brick's height. We've got a wheel well turned sideways, making a fairly accurate hood scoop. And this puzzling piece puts the hood together like a puzzle. Honestly, the buildup of many thin layers on this front end, they make for some really great looking small details. The sides are somewhat standard at this scale of speed champions. In the rear, we slide some strange spectacles on this surprise robot's face. And this kind of thing is almost typical at this point in speed champs. And this bit's my favorite. I was very surprised and did not see this spoiler coming because it's transparent. Then it is seamlessly surrounded. That is a tight fit and that fit is on fleek. As usual, on go the wheels and windshield and me waxing poetic about the engineering meets art beautiful amalgamation that is modern speed champions and not so beautiful amalgamation that is this color scheme, but more on that in a second. I will admit, I have not always been the most respectful when it comes to this brand of motor racing that I don't personally follow. Though that level of irreverence does make for some pretty good comments. But when it comes to NASCAR, I've turned a corner and then another corner and another and another because it's NASCAR. But I'm returning to my roots. My mom's from Georgia, my dad's from North Carolina. I grew up in South Florida and now I live in Texas. By all indications, I should be a huge NASCAR fan, especially with my diet. Heck, one of my cousins dated Dale Earnhardt Jr. They broke up because apparently all he did was talk about car racing, go figure. Don't ask me follow-up questions, we're not close my cousin or Dale and I. But seeing as how this set is one of very few officially licensed NASCAR Lego sets, I thought it was about time to give NASCAR a try. That Anna started watching Netflix's new NASCAR show was a NASCAR at full speed. It's pretty good. I would recommend it, especially for those looking to learn more about the sport. I learned there's playoffs, there's a crazy point system, plenty of great rivalries, and some confusing team logistics like Denny Hamlin owns a team, but he's also a driver, but he has two drivers on his team. And of course his co-owner is none other than Michael Jordan. I did learn a lot of these drivers are just like us. One dude is super into iRacing and Lego because he has sets in the background on the show. Also, this other dude got a Black Series Zuckus in his RV. There's a Titanic in the background of one of these shots. You think any one of these dudes wouldn't enjoy a nice Saturday night in spent building this new Camaro? And I'd be curious to ask them what their favorite part of this set is. As for me, well, let's talk details. We'll take another look at that previous gen Camaro in a few laps, but on that car is where these Camaro wheel covers were introduced. I think they add a lot to the look of this car. I also realized that you NASCAR fans have the same problems as F1 fans do. We're not so different after all, in that you also deserve slick tires on these cars. This set actually has a positive rake, meaning the rear wheels are slightly higher than the front wheels. This positive rake adds to the car's downforce, I assume. Personally, I've only ever dealt with a very negative rake in my shed. He's always like, oh, and more leaves every November. Same thing. Get a leaf blower. It's exhausting. Just like this set stickers. This small set has 30 stickers. Don't worry. We'll do some math in a second. I have read a lot of people's feedback on this issue. And a lot of those people sound like they are rationalizing the use of so many stickers saying, well, the real cars are basically covered in stickers. And so this is basically just Lego being extra accurate. I understand this perspective, but also it sounds like you all are suffering from sticker Stockholm syndrome. Let's decompress with some math. And instead of doing a price per piece ratio, let's do a sticker to set price ratio. In this 
this case, we have 1.11 stickers for every $1 this set costs. Now, if this new 1/8 scale LEGO Technic McLaren P1 contained that same sticker to set price ratio, it would contain almost exactly 500 stickers, which I think most can agree is far too many stickers. Here's something fun, relatively speaking. If I were this spoiler and someone had looked my way, I would compare their experience to that of my dentist this morning when I told them I floss daily. I saw right through me. All that to say what can clearly, clearly be seen, this spoiler is transparent and cleverly constructed using those newish two by two curved roof corners, which result in a surprisingly spot on shape, making this no spoilers, maybe my favorite part of this set. And speaking of clear, safety is clearly paramount to this team with the inclusion of this roll cage, but I retain the right to my opinion that beer sponsor or not, it's excessive to put three bars inside the car. Also for safety on the inside of this car is a fire extinguisher, which ironically is made out of a candle piece, which also might come in handy because this car is on fire. Figuratively on fire, of course, which does seem a tad bit insensitive considering the fact that these cars so often actually catch on fire. But the decaling and the color detailing on this set are interesting to say the least and outlandish to say the most. Here's my personal prediction with this purple, teal, and yellow color scheme Lego is subtly hinting that they're bringing back the Lego Technic competitions sub theme along with Lego Technic minifigures. You heard it here first. But if Lego was looking to stand out, I think they have succeeded. But have they gone too far with this color selection? A lot of people are saying it is a bit of a divisive subject. Part of me agrees with that. Another part of me strongly disagrees with that. They've given us crazy liveries before, but were they a little more congruent, crazy yet complimentary? This color scheme would look fine on a grid surrounded by a half dozen other cars with equally as wild liveries waiting for that green flag on an oval track. But sitting on a shelf surrounded by a bunch of more traditionally colored sport and super car speed champion sets, yeah, this is gonna stand out. So I guess I'm torn and I can see both sides of this divisive argument. Let me know what you think. But I'll channel my inner commenter for a second and say what you would say. If you don't like it, change it. It's Lego. I can't wait to see what customs people come up with around this car. Of course, then it won't be a stock car anymore, but I'm not actually sure why we call them that. Another notable decal, I was curious why the Lego designers chose the number 94. Maybe they're big Bill Elliott fans. Then again, who wouldn't be? Having the courage to pursue ballet over boxing at such a tumultuous time in Northern England, stepping out from your father's shadow, learning to stand on your own two toes, who wouldn't be inspired? But much like Billy's mother, notably absent from this set is any indication of roof flaps. So be careful if you drive this thing backwards, it's likely to flip. That's when things get dangerous. You might see some real flames. Let's do some criticisms and comparisons, notably with the nose of this car. The term to turn your nose up is an idiom that means to refuse or accept to take something because it's not good enough. And I will turn my nose up at the nose of this car because it's turned up far too far. It needs to slope more. Here's some constructive criticism because I think more should have been constructed here. I think this set would have been an excellent opportunity to bring back small speed champions, ancillary builds, maybe add in a pit crew, a little garage, some lift, some NASCAR pit area accessories. But as the cars got bigger, we lost all those side builds. We haven't had any since 2019. And I don't think any of them have been significant supplemental builds since probably the Ferrari Ultimate Garage in 2018. I just think more could be done and I think we would pay for it. At least I would. For those who know their history, Richard Petty is the best to ever do it. And this new Camaro may seem like a remake of the six stud wide Camaro released in 2019, but they're very different. In addition to the two additional studs on the new version, the old version was actually the previous generation of Camaro. The new one is the Gen 7 Camaro. Looks fine. I think a lot of people still think that this one holds up. I agree. And it's not too expensive. I picked this one up for $15 out of Bricks and Me Things in North Carolina. That's appropriately where the roots of stock car racing run deep with those Appalachian moonshiners. Didn't run into any moonshiners at the Raleigh Bricks and Minifigs, but I think you gotta go a little further west out towards Wilkesboro to find them. Now, I could comment on the fact that these generations are indistinguishable from each other, much like Damon Wayne Sr. and Jr., but I follow Formula One and I like to follow different changes and regulations in the cars from year to year, so I don't want to be hypocritical. I mean, I am, but I don't want to be. Also hardly comparable, the Technic Camaro, which I think was released about a year before this current model. Again, one of the only officially licensed NASCAR Lego sets. Also didn't do a great job with the hood section. Did do a great job with the patriotism. America, 
I mentioned earlier what it might look like to see this new Camaro in a grid setting, surrounded by other current generation NASCAR cars. Got me thinking. This is the current generation Chevy. There are also Ford cars on the grid who are conveniently using Ford Mustang Dark Horses as their flagship car, which LEGO Speed Champions has already made. So give us a recolor, a new decaling, put this one on the grid too. And the Toyotas on the grid are Camrys, which may not be, some, someone out there is bound to be a fan of a team that uses a Camry and would love to see a NASCAR Camry. I'm sure. Let me know if that's you and everyone else let me know if we make fun of the Toyota Camry teams. It kind of seems like we should as a NASCAR family, but I don't want to, I don't want to presume. This set did come with one minifigure in an appropriately outlandish racing suit, but he does have great spiky hair. If anyone's looking to make their own Charles Leclerc minifigure or a purple helmet for those still trying to make a Lewis Hamilton figure from the 2021 W12, but this may be the first minifigure to date with official NASCAR branding. But I personally wouldn't choose to date a race car driver too much time on the road, and also I wouldn't want to have to explain my relationship with a Lego minifigure to my parents. I can tell this is a Camaro because the wheels and windshield told me. I can tell this is a race car because of the bright livery and bold branding. I can tell it's a Speed Champion set because it's a darn good looking car, and that's enough for me to be happy. That's also enough from me. Tell me what you need in your life to be truly happy. Be sure to like and subscribe if you enjoyed one single thing about this video. That's a checkered flag. I'll see you next time.